Recep Tayyip Erdogan has dominated Turkish politics for over two decades. At one point in time, he was just an aspiring football player. Now, he's become one of the most powerful Turkish leaders since the country's founding father, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk. So, how did this happen? It all started in Istanbul in the early 1990s. Erdogan was mayor of the city from 1994 to 1998. He helped ease the city's water shortage problems and traffic chaos, improving the quality of life for Istanbulites. Under him, the city started to return to its past splendor, but his tenure as mayor came to an abrupt end. Erdogan and his welfare party were banned. He was imprisoned for four months for inciting religious hatred for a poem he read at a rally in 1997. Essentially, he threatened Turkey's carefully guarded religious secularism, and that made a lot of people nervous. At the time, it seemed like his political career was over. But in 2001, he co-founded the Conservative Justice and Development Party, known as the AKP. The AKP, which has strong ties to the Muslim Brotherhood, would eventually go on to drastically reshape Turkey. The party swept to power in 2003, and it's dominated Turkish politics ever since. Erdogan served as prime minister for the maximum three terms, during which he was no stranger to controversy. He built himself an opulent $615 million, 1,000-room palace in a protected forest. There was a corruption scandal, social media bans, and the widespread anti-government Gezi Park protests of 2013. Yet none of that slowed him down, and in 2014, Erdogan became Turkey's first directly elected president. For years, global powers had approved of the moderate Islam of Erdogan and the AKP, but critics started accusing him of behaving like a dictator. Under him, Turkey's economy has improved, but it's come at a cost. The country has slipped to 157 on the World Press Freedom Index and has become an increasingly dangerous place for journalists to work. Turkey has imprisoned more journalists than any other country in the world. Those who challenge or insult Erdogan are often imprisoned. In 2015, a peace process aimed at resolving the long-running conflict with the Kurds broke down. The country then suffered a series of bloody terror attacks attributed or claimed by hardline Kurdish groups in Turkey. At the same time, it was also targeted by ISIS. The following year, an attempted coup changed Turkey's political landscape again. Erdogan narrowly survived. Rebel fighter jets apparently had him in their sights, but didn't fire. Since then, Turkey's been under a state of emergency. Over 150,000 teachers, civil servants, lawyers, and military officers have been purged from their jobs. And on the international stage, Turkey has started playing a more aggressive role in the region. In Syria, the Turkish military intervened along its border and fought against forces friendly to the U.S. Last year, Erdogan narrowly won a referendum that'll see the country transition to a presidential system. Those sweeping changes are expected to be implemented after June's election and will propel Turkey's move to one-man rule. Over the course of his career, he's shifted his focus away from Istanbul and towards the country's rural areas. He's banking on their support to win re-election. If that happens, he'll wield powers that are unprecedented in modern Turkey's history.